cost behavior. Costs of a company behave differently if they are variable, fixed, or a combination of both variable and fixed called mixed. Let's look at an example so you'll understand better what I'm speaking about. Let's look at Joe's hamburgers. Joe has sales. This is how much he sells his hamburgers for. He sells them for $5. And then a cost associated with selling the hamburgers is he's got a hamburger patty. He's got buns, cheese, and condiments, all of which total to $2.50. So for every hamburger that he sells for $5, he's got to incur these expenses in order to sell them of $2.50. So it means that after he has taken into consideration his patty, his buns, his cheese, and his condiments, he's going to have $2.50 left over from the sale of his hamburger in order to meet his other costs. In this instance, it's electricity. So right now, Joe is operating out of a shop that his mother owns. She owns a grocery store, and Joe's working out of that selling his hamburgers. So when he has zero customers and he's not selling anything, then he doesn't incur these costs. So these costs that are indexed or change according to the number that he sells are called variable costs. They change or vary in relationship to the numbers sold. But even if he doesn't sell anything, he still has to pay $45 for his electricity. So he's going to have a loss when he doesn't sell any hamburgers of $45. Now that $45 is either a mixed or a fixed cost. So we know electricity is going to go up if he uses electricity. In this instance, he doesn't use any because he doesn't have any customers. So in all likelihood, this is going to be a mixed cost. It's going to have a fixed portion. He has to pay $45 no matter what. But then as he begins to use more electricity, electricity when he has more customers, then it's going to go up. And then we're going to look at when he does have some customers. So this instance he has 22 customers. So his sales are $110 and then these are all the costs that he's incurred now because he had these 22 customers and so then he had $55 left over his electricity cost were $56, so there was a base amount of $45 that he had to pay, but then it went up based upon the number of customers that he had. So now his profit was a dollar. So he's pretty closing to break even if he has 22 customers. Now let's see, he has 50 customers. So now he earns $250. $125 of that is associated with variable costs. His electricity is now $70, and but now he has a profit of $55. So now his, his business is growing. So he has these many more customers, 100 customers, sales are 500, costs associated, variable costs that vary in relationship to the numbers of hamburgers sold, $250 he has left over, his electricity is $95, and now he's made $155. So now his customers jump up. Well, now his mom says, you just got too many customers and your, your, you know, the parking lot is too full with all of your customers. So I want you to go ahead and I like your business, but go ahead and move it down the street and rent from your uncle. So now he's renting from his uncle, which is a better location. So now everybody knows about Joe's hamburger. So they're going to Joe's. And so now they have 500 customers. He's making 2,500, of which the, the variable costs associated with that are 1,250. He has his electricity charges, but oh my goodness, now he's got rent. So now he's got to pay rent. Now looking at this rent, no matter how many customers he has, the rent stays the same. When a cost stays the same and doesn't vary like the cost of the hamburger patties, the buns, the cheese, and the condiments, then it's called a fixed cost. It's fixed no matter what. The variable costs vary in relationship to how many uh, hamburgers he sells. And these electricity costs are a mixed cost or a combination of both a fixed portion the $45, and then the variable portion, which is changes in relationship to how many hamburgers he's selling. So now we see he has like 750 customers and he made $955. So let's look at some definitions. So cost behavior. The fixed costs, let's look at them. They remain constant month over month. So his rent will always be $500. Whether he sells one hamburger or 2,000 hamburgers, his rent is always going to be $500. 
it should be analyzed in total not on a per unit sold basis so when you're analyzing and trying to predict costs and trying to figure out how your costs are going to be the same if whether you sell one or five hundred it's still going to be five hundred dollars in um, rent so the total will be the same no matter what the volume is that you sell it will go down as units sold or produced go up so if the $500 rent is going to be $5 per unit if 100 is sold, but it's going to be $1 per unit if he sells 500. This is not a good predictor of cost because it doesn't stay the same in relationship to how the units are produced and go up. In other words, it's better to look at it in total because it's going to be the same as opposed to looking at it on a per unit basis because that's going to be all over the place. It's not going to be a fixed amount per unit based upon the number of sold. Now let's look at the difference between that and variable costs. These will change in relationship to the units sold or produced. Remember we saw in Joe's hamburgers, when he didn't sell any, he had none of these costs. But when he sold 22, he had these costs. And when he sold 750, he had these costs. So these are going to change in relationship to the units sold or produced. No sales, no costs. Many sales, many costs. They should be analyzed on a per unit basis, not in total, because you can predict how the costs will behave because they're going to change in relationship to the per units sold. So total variable costs are dependent upon the amount sold. Second, or thirdly rather, it will go up as units are sold or produced as the units sold or produced go up. So it will go up as the units sold or produced go up. So the $2.50 for all of the, the patty, the bun, the cheese, and the condiments at $2.50 is going to go up based upon the number of units he sells or produces. So the $2.50 per, $2.50 per hamburger is the same no matter how many are sold. It's constant on a per unit basis. So it's constant on a per unit basis. So every time when Joe knows at the beginning to, as he goes through several months of business, he's going to begin to understand that every time he sells a hamburger, $2.50 is automatically gone. So that means that every time he sells one, he only has $2.50 left over because he had to spend this money to make that money. So he spend this money to make that money. So only $2.50 is going to be left over every time he sells one that he can use to pay all his other costs. So mixed costs. Mixed costs are comprised of both fixed and variable costs. A good example is the electricity. There is a fixed charge each month by the power company to have the electricity available for use. And there is a charge each month for the amount of electricity used. The formula to represent this is mixed costs are equal to fixed costs plus the variable cost per unit multiplied multiplying the number of units. So mixed costs are going to be considered to be Y. A is going to be equal to fixed costs. And B, B is going to be used to the variable, with, with means the variable cost per unit. And X represents the volume that or the amount sold or produced, whatever volume you're using. So let's look at this. The best way to determine cost behavior is to graph the cost and what causes the cost, hamburger sold, patients admitted, or guest visits. So you can't just graph the cost. You need to also know what causes the cost to increase or decrease. So what causes the cost to increase or decrease plus the dollar value associated with that increase or decrease. The best way to do this is to use Excel and see what the graph looks like. So if you have total variable cost per graph, this is the zero cost if there's zero sold. Now if 10,000 are sold, then you're going to have 100,000 in cost. So this is showing you that this is a pure variable cost. It is absolutely zero when zero is sold. And the more sold here, the more sold here, the more the costs are going to increase. Now here, this is the total fixed costs. This is $50,000 no matter what happens. So no matter how many they produce, it is still always going to be $50,000. Now this is a mixed cost graph, and it shows that it's going to be $1,000 no matter how much is sold. So if it's zero is sold, it's still going to start out at $1,000. That will be the fixed portion of it. Then as they sell more, 500, 1,000, 1,500, the costs are going to go up. So this is a mixed cost. This is the variable portion.